Um, welcome to the town board work session for Tuesday, January 7th, 2020. Um, just I wanted to say a few things before we launch into the um, sidewalk plan. So um, this is my first work session as the town supervisor, and so I just wanted to say um, that I'm excited to get started, <laughs> and I'm really thrilled. This is a great opportunity, so uh, thank you, and I look forward to working with everybody. Um, I also just wanted to acknowledge that we have some new faces around the table and in the room tonight, um, as well as some returning characters for past seasons. Uh, so I first wanted to acknowledge Councilwoman Lisa Sachs, uh, Lisa Katz, um, who is our longest serving town board member and was elected in 2013 and then re-elected in 2017. Um, so I'm not thrilled to be working. <laughs> um, we also have new town board member Jason Lichtendahl, um, who was elected in 2019 and just started his service um, in January of this year. Um, in tonight's organizational meeting, um, I appointed and he accepted Jeremy Sland to serve as our deputy town supervisor uh, for the year 2020. Um, Jeremy was first elected to the town board in 2015 um, and was re-elected last year in 2019. Um, and so obviously brings a wealth of experience uh, with him to this position. And so I look forward to working with you. Close capacity. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, and also during the organizational meeting today, um, the town board unanimously uh, voted to appoint Lauren Levin. Um, to the vacant seat on the town board. Um, Lauren will serve for a one-year term um, until the next general election is held uh, in November of this year. Um, and so we're thrilled that you uh, accepted the appointment um, and happy that you're a part of the town board. Look forward to working with you. Um, also at our organizational meeting tonight, we um, reappointed Jill Shapiro, who has agreed to continue uh, to serve the town as our town administrator uh, for the next two years. Um, and Jill obviously has been serving for the past six years, um, and so having her um, agree to continue to serve um, will give us continuity in terms of our understanding about the issues that the town is working on. Um, and also for anybody who doesn't know, um, everybody in the room does, but in case anybody is listening or watching, Jill works tirelessly on behalf of the town, um, and she's really a fabulous public servant. So I'm really grateful that you accepted yeah, the offer yeah, to yeah, come yeah. back. And, and if you can't see it, I hope she's blushing. <laughs> 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 now more she's blushing. I think they can see it. <laughs> Maybe it's just cold. It's cold. <laughs> Um, and joining the management team with Jill, or continuing on the management <coughs> team with Jill, is Rob Derry, who is our deputy town supervisor and our town controller, um, and uh, has been doing a fabulous job, um, a really fabulous job, because we don't hear about the budget, and we our finances are really in a secure place. Um, and so we know that you know behind the scenes, he's working really hard to make sure everything's going smoothly. Um, Rob is also here at the meeting tonight, because he has agreed to step up and play um, an increased role uh, on behalf of the town board in terms of tracking the status of the goals and objectives that we're going to be setting here tonight. Um, and so he will be coming back to report to the town board on a quarterly basis on our progress against all of those goals and objectives, as well as to be giving us a budget update on a quarterly basis. So thank you, Rob, and welcome. Okay. And thank you to everybody else who's in the room. I'm not going to go around one by one. But Nick, we're thrilled to have Keenan Mean back thank for this you. year. Um, you, along with Ed and Drew, have done a fabulous job of serving the town. Um, Christina Papes, who's our town clerk and receiver of taxes. Uh, Lauren Cascone, who is Jill's uh, executive assistant and uh, keeps us all running and, and, uh, and on track. Um, and uh, Kellen Cantrell, who's going to present to us tonight. And that will be my transition to talk about the comprehensive sidewalk plan. Just as good of a transition. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I already said, thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for being here. Good evening. Um, I'm Kelly Cantrell. I work in the development department here in Newcastle. And I'm going to be presenting on the progress of the comprehensive sidewalk plan. And so, the comprehensive sidewalk plan directly ties into the approved 2017 Newcastle comprehensive plan uh, through these three goals uh, goal 10, 14, and 47. And they essentially promote walkability, promote development of <coughs> areas with existing infrastructure, and coordinate town infrastructure planning with regional infrastructure. And so prior to identifying priority areas um, within the town of where sidewalks could be located and where they're comprehensive plan driven, we looked at existing public sidewalks. And so this is in your packet. I'm sorry that it's so small. Uh, if you want a zoomed in area, I can definitely provide you with one later on, 
Uh, my computer decided to die on me today um, <laughs> because the file is so large, it's a lot of data. So these are the existing infrastructure uh, sidewalks. And so really the conditions are, they're not concentrated in the hamlets. Uh, they are concentrated in the hamlets, sorry. Uh, there are incomplete connections within and between the hamlets of sidewalks. Most schools are not connected to the hamlets. Uh, there's a lack of walkable connections to parks via sidewalks and there's a lack of walkable connections to regional pedestrian and multimodal infrastructure, the North County Trailway, as well as the Metro North. If you look at that map again, you see where the gray is, it doesn't really go that far. Um, and so in order to better place these prioritized uh, connections of where these comp plan driven sidewalks would be located, we looked at what other divisions we're working on. The engineering division is currently working on Three areas here, um, Somerstown Road, all the way up to Hidden Hollow uh, Lane, and then they're also working on Millwood Road slash the North County Trailway over to uh, Gedney Park, which would then connect in West Orchard School to uh, via a, an existing sidewalk on Granite Road. Mm -hmm. And then there's a little section in front of the Chico's here uh, on Station Place that they're working on. Right, which actually is and a part that of Transitions that to you, John. <laughs> there we go, just happy to have. So, um, just to refresh the, the board's recollection and for those newcomers, um, we have been working to take and extend the sidewalk, the existing sidewalk on Station Place, around the corner of Dechico's, establishing um, safe crossings um, from the Dechico's shopping center to the other side of Route 100, uh, the Wayside uh, Church is right there, and also replacing sidewalks along in front of Rockies, straight down to the Millwood Park, which actually we have planned this for now several years, which just happens to beautifully transition into the fact that we're going to be doing substantial improvements at the Millwood Park. So all in all, we've got a plan. Um, we went as far as Speccarelli's initially, with the idea that there was going to be proposed future sidewalk improvements, which is what we're talking right. about now, um, further down Route 100. And the question really ended up being um, whether or not we extend the sidewalk on the, I'm terrible with directions, so forgive me, on the uh, Spaccarelli side of the street, or if we flipped it over because Hidden Hollow was on the other side of the street. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Oh, fine, be that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you you say say <laughs> um, one of the things um, to consider also is that uh, the Millwood Swim Club is off of Sand Street mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. actually has a connection, has a potential connection to the North County Trail. So one of the things that we may want to think about... The Millwood Swim Club, which is now the Millwood, Millwood Gar Intergenerate, Intergenerate Garden. Garden. Millwood. Yeah, Intergenerate Property. Community Garden at Millwood. Right, which has a <laughs> water connection, a portable water connection, and will not be challenged next year when it comes to plantings. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so there's all sorts of possibilities. So... Um, going forward. So we're actually very excited about this. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob Scioli is working uh, on a proposal with NV5, which is the, con the engineering concern that is currently working uh, with New York State DOT to get the final approval so that we can finally start the, um, the Millwood mm, sidewalk yes. project where um, uh, the, the real estate acquisition, so as the board may be aware, when you're building on a New York State road and it involves putting a sidewalk in the New York State right-of-way, they require an actual taking. So we had to purchase the property, not just get an easement, but we actually had to purchase the property from the property owner. So we need an appraisal, it needs to be approved, and we're in the midst of getting that contract signed now. It then needs to be approved by New York State DOT, and only then, when they get the contract, will they then look at our 90% finished plans, mm -hmm. allow us to go to 100%, grant us the permit, and then we're finally at a point where we're going out, be able to go out to bid to actually get this project done. Mm -hmm. So um, in our notes, we have construction to be completed in 2021, and we're hoping that that is a, a more than generous uh, amount of time for us to be able to accomplish 
that portion of it. But since <coughs> MV5 has already done this portion of it, um, we just thought that they were the most logical uh, engineering company to come in and try to help us out with the rest of it. Mm -hmm. So that it sort of gives us an interesting opportunity to take and tie into the North County Trail at yet another spot. Mm -hmm. so, May I ask, so sure. as far as what's going to be completed for 2021, is it this portion or is it also that? that no, no, so it is, it is uh, from the entrance to the rec field okay. um, all the way down through... Um, this is the other okay. side of actually Pheasant, Pheasant Run. Run. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By the gas. <coughs> so opposite yes, the, the gas, gas station. Right. Um, and then, so that entire stretch where like Rockies is. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. And then on the other side of the street as well, extending the sidewalk, which right now ends about here right. at one of the entrances to the Chico's, allowing yeah. people to walk all the way around yeah. the corner. Yeah, this is nice. That end, that, end, get, that end sidewalk goes to the gas station right before the Taconic? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it stopped oh, at the entrance? No, there's, 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 there's a, um, uh, a driveway up for, I think it's Con Ed or somebody who's got a, a, a driveway right, right there. there. And yeah. then it's the, yeah, the yeah, gas station. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where we are with this. Okay, sorry, Kellen. So that's the engineering update. <laughs> <laughs> and so now we move on to the planning. Um, so, so now that we've identified the in, what engineering the engineering division is working I'm on. I'm sorry. Can you just can you rewind for just one second, sure, just so absolutely. I can. So when you say it's with engineering, everything Jill, engineering is Bob working with NV5, and they're working on everything north up to Hidden Hollow, as well as this connection to Gedney and up to Granite. I'm I'm sorry. So. Um, when we say that this is with engineering right now, right? That means that Bob Scioli is working with NV5 on engineering plans that include everything from Spaccarelli's up to Hidden Hollow, as well as the connection from Millwood up to Granite Road, past Gedney Park up to Granite Road. Right. Th those are more tentative, those plans, because one of the, one of the problems that we're having along Route 133 Mm -hmm. is again, the state requires a taking of the properties. Mm -hmm. And if you, the next time you drive by there, take a look at the driveways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the state requires a five foot sidewalk and a five foot snow shelf, that's 10 feet in. Um, those properties have very steep driveways. Mm -hmm. um, the retaining walls that go along the road mm -hmm. cannot be on the state right of way anymore. They must be, so it's going to be five foot, five foot, Five foot sidewalk, five foot snow shelf, and then the, the area of the retaining wall. Wall has to be off of the retaining wall has to be off of state property. So you have to push it back another three feet. There's no there. hardship provision. Not really. No. Why? So um. So so the state. I, thought, I was picturing the sidewalk being on the other side of the street. So. Uh, it's, so on it's on the firehouse side, on the Gedney side. On the Gedney side. side I Even thought. if it's yeah. on the firehouse side of the street, like the house opposite Gedney has a quite a steep driveway. Okay. So you have to just yeah. be careful that when we take ten yeah. feet in front of it, yep. mm -hmm. that we still have that they still have a proper sight line and can get out. And there's a grade that doesn't make it out yeah. of the property untenable. So those are the challenges that we're having. Mm -hmm. um, but well, we have less to take if it's going on the Gedney side. We would have less to we take. Own the problem, a significant portion yes, of the that problem land. is, is that the, the the topography is such that those driveways are yeah, tremendously. I feel like it's worse on the other side. It's it, it's problematic on both sides, um, and the and the, possibly the bigger problem with Granite Road is that the sight line distances mm -hmm. at that corner are terrible. Yeah, I um, and I don't know that the state would allow us to put any kind of crosswalk in, even though there is a, a sidewalk along Granite yeah, Road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether or not the state would allow us to put pedestrian beacons there and encourage crossing when there is such right. a limited sight yep. distance, mm -hmm. I. So we we are exploring other things. Are uh, there are other options, perhaps um, North County Trailway? There is um, an easement through to. Um, like under the Conant power lines or along the Conant yep. power lines yep. back the there, that, that yeah. may be a better path for us to take to be able to link the North County Trail to Gedney mm -hmm. um, and come in the back way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, we, we are presenting these mm -hmm. options to NV5, mm -hmm. but, um, and hoping that they are going to um, give us a preliminary determination as what is our best path forward. 
So I, I really, that's that's great. It was just oh, I, my question was just straightforward in terms of the, all of this is being analyzed right now by NV5. Yes, we we are getting proposals for for it right. to be analyzed. Yes. Okay. All right. So this this work that's being done by MB5 is that part of the 2020 budget or is this where's the funding for the analysis and then in the future actually building this uh, the sidewalk coming from? Okay, so the town board. Oh, okay. So the, the the town board has built into um, its budget um, monies for studies, um, fifty thousand dollars within the town board line, and then fifty thousand dollars for. Comprehensive, uh, comprehensive mm -hmm. plan studies as well. Mm -hmm. So there are monies available for the studies. We, the board understood that as part of the comp plan, it involved a lot of studies, and this, this sure. was be our, our starting point. So they built funding in so that we would be in a position to be able to, um, you know, figure out, target where our next steps were going to be and what the studies were going to be. Makes no so the, the Millwood portion that's already in the planning stages, we're at 90%? Yes. So that has already been funded. So mm -hmm. we originally, years ago, had anticipated and borrowed money to put a sidewalk on 117, and we ran into issues with... Right, with takings. takings. Um, because the properties tend to be village homes, right. and they have very shallow yards. So mm -hmm. at, it, it turned out that, that we had to abandon those plans. So we allocated mm -hmm. those funds, along with we had a $500,000 multimodal oh, grant. Right. So we allocated some of those funds and the multimodal grant to the Millwood sidewalk, and a small amount of the funds to uh, the King Street sidewalk that was just completed last year. So that funding came from a grant? Half. It was Part 50, of it from a grant. 50, Got it. Uh, it'll, it'll be less. A little less than half, no? I mean, we borrowed for it already. Oh, all right, yeah, yeah. I see, so we borrowed from it. So it's not coming from a capital reserve fund, it's coming from... Not a reserve fund, no. No, money borrowed. It was from the 117 project. project. It was, right. That was so we should just be mindful of the um, potential uses of that um, town board and planning board sure. studies lines right. that we have, or town board and comprehensive plan studies lines, right? Because we've also discussed using the, that for the recreation master plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and like last year, we hardly used any of the money for yeah. you know, studies, and yet this year, you know. <laughs> now we're going to study. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Onward to uh, future sidewalk connections. Um, <clears throat> so this map reflects uh, future sidewalk connections that are comp comprehensive <coughs> and driven. Um, and so they are connecting the hamlets. They're in red. I know it's, again, it's harder to see. Um, so they're in red. So they connect the hamlets. They're making the connections between uh, Quaker Road, uh, from uh, Chappaqua, the Chappaqua Hamlet, to Millwood. Um, they're also making the connection with the Chap Line, uh, as well as Bedford Road and Roaring Brook. Um, and we also have a connection on Station Place to uh, the North County Trailway there. And so then, based on the comprehensive plan driven sidewalk uh, connections, um, we proposed to the town board in 2019 um, these five were chosen as priorities, and the bottom two are already with the engineering division. See, you already had all this in your presentation. I just needed to let you talk. <laughs> this is fascinating. I don't, I don't know a lot about the history of the sidewalk, you know, and all that. It's very fascinating. And so we began to put together the Newcastle Comprehensive Sidewalk Plan, and here's the uh, table of content. I know it's, it's riveting. Um, <laughs> And so, can you just remind me? I'm sorry. The Bedford Road one yeah. that was going from so this is next, like Memorial <coughs> to like where Beth Ellis, right? Yeah. Um, Memorial, the Memorial I'll show you in a sec. I'll, that's that's okay. uh, in a couple of slides. Okay, I'll show you exactly where it's at. Um, and so within the table of content, there are really two areas. There's the desktop planning analysis and the preliminary engineering analysis, um, which each priority area will go through. Um, and then the town board really chose Bedford Road uh, in 2019 for us to study. And so here's Bedford Road. Here's your, uh, the answer to your question, Lisa. Mm -hmm. So it would, it would go to, from the corner of King and Bedford, 
which there's a tiny little bit of sidewalk right in front of, um, Quaker Hill Tavern. Yes, yeah, Quaker. right in front okay. of the tavern there. Mm -hmm. And it would go all the way up to the connection at uh, Chappaqua Crossing at Roaring Brook Road. Right, yes. okay. Um, and so, I, and it's, so it's roughly the, a mile. East side of the oh, 170. So we, so mm -hmm. we've done, we've done a 90% Completed an analysis. We've had we've had the engineering intern over the summer. He was out there measuring for any takings, and so he did both sides of the road oh. to double check to see which side would be more feasible. Mm -hmm. And that's why. And we had him for a month. He did um, engineering CAD sheets for us, and so that's mostly done. We're just we're doing the write up as we speak. I'm sorry. I'm confused. I thought we decided a long time ago that that was not feasible. Well, the, the reason why we decided to take it so much land. Right. The reason why we decided it wasn't feasible, expensive. Right. Was because they did the preliminary legwork right. to be able to make. But it, we assumed that was the case. But we actually went out within with interns to take and make sure that we were correct in our assumptions. Okay. To actually get some rough numbers to understand where those what takings would be you know, roughly had, mm -hmm. and so that was essentially. That's really the template for the other areas to be studied. Um, and so that's the next steps, is to finish the template and then move on to the next priori the priorities and then continue you know, the analysis. And here's a more zoomed in map of the uh, areas. So for example, we want to know whether or not, as opposed to going the entire route along 120, along Bedford Road 117, whether or not there were neighborhoods there that perhaps we could cut through um, on local roads and getting off the main um, state road that would help facilitate, you know, <coughs> help us to be able to create, you know, sidewalks and a, and a cut through. I think you yeah. could yeah. see the wall of 117 to do that. That's what I think. You could do it along, you could do it along Orchard I mean, Bridge. Right, Orchard Bridge, you're cutting down. down like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, I see, cutting yeah. down all the way mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. behind yeah. wall right. rings in that mm -hmm. way, yeah, I guess. Well, there's an alternative to Shadowbrook Parkway, which is, it is a private road, but it would connect into the chap line. So that would be kind of the end. So I mean, the way that I see this, and I was definitely the person who was pushing to include 117 mm -hmm. in, our, in this plan. Um, but I kind of see this as an either or, as between doing this, uh, doing Bedford Road um, 117 from, you know, kind of the Walgreens intersection up to, up to Roaring Brook Road, or doing the chap line. And so, you know, we're in the midst of the feasibility study for the right. chap line right now. Right. If we find that that's not feasible, I then think we need to be, you know, more seriously <laughs> considering. And, and, you know, so it's great that we've, we've done that analysis right. and we'll actually be able to compare the two then when we get the results of the feasibility study. Um, but I don't think it would make good strategic sense to try to do both of them. We don't need to. Right. So I, so I don't know about a shadow brook option that would then require you to tie into the chap line because then we're talking about doing both as opposed to selecting one or the other. And that's the end of the presentation. Anybody have any questions about um... so, so yeah, okay. So what's what's the what what discussion has been had about going from granite down one you know south down one hundred uh, one twenty to where the sidewalk where the sidewalk ends is that, <laughs> to where the sidewalk currently ends? I mean, uh, uh, at least that's what's in you know, red what right now. I'm sorry, where? Gra granite or no? It's not. That's one twenty. Yeah, wait. Right, you've got a star over there by. Granite, yeah, and it's uh, it's coming all the way down 100 to where the, the current road. sidewalk ends mm -hmm. or starts. That'll be the yep. That'll be the quicker road connection. Yep. So that was one of the one of the top five yeah. priorities of the. Yeah, the I don't remember road. who came around. Was it Sabrina and we discussed with Sabrina sort of prioritizing? That was the last year. Was it 19 or 18? Last, last year. Yeah. Prioritizing which ones we thought would be. No, I think that that sounds great. But so you're asking about that little spur between the star and the dashed red line, where oh. you continue up 120. Oh. 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 Yeah. No, right this whole thing. Here? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're talking the whole, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's 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 that we have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, that's right. yes. We haven't talked about it at all. That's all. <coughs> <coughs> Every other red line that we, we've just talked about is not that one. Yeah. So, so what's, yeah. where, what is that? Tell me. <laughs> so depending on, you know, what your priorities are, um, so these are the, the 29. I see. So, so that's the Quaker Road. That's the Quaker Road. That's the Quaker Road. Got it. Yes. Right. right. And it extends from where the where the sidewalk ends currently. Yes. 
um, up to se beyond seven bridges. Up to, up to getting there, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Okay. all the way straight yeah. through. Mm -hmm. wow. And so that would connect the hamlets almost, you right. know, well, if, depending on. Well, depending upon where the county, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So one, uh, the, one of the things, ways that we may be able to accomplish at least a portion of that is that the county has a capital project that they've been carrying in their capital plan for years, um, but that they've indicated that they intend to jumpstart within the next couple of years yep. um, to do an extension of the county, uh, to connect to the county trunk line mm -hmm. going up Route 120, um, which <coughs> would go up at least as far as the Wagon Road Camp, um, which most of that is sidewalked today. Uh, but a portion of it is beyond where our sidewalks end today. And, you know, much like the way that when we dug up downtown Chappaqua, we were then able to redo the sidewalks. Yeah, the yeah right. right. There's the possibility of things. So what we could do to get ahead of that um, is we could go ahead and, you know, map that section out to have the preliminary uh, analysis already done if you want to prioritize that section of Quaker as next, I guess, if that's... I still think you're still thinking it's easy a couple years away. Yeah. yeah. I think it's dependent on what we hear from the county yeah, ultimately about their their thoughts on the okay. the So um, so in terms of the, the sidewalk areas that we've discussed so far and other sidewalk areas, I mean the, the point was is that any connection that we have any sidewalk that we have currently, we the the comp plan um, contemplates us extending. You know concentrated in the in the hamlet and then spurring out. So are there other areas that the board is interested in? Um, well, I, I mean, I think it's, the, relatively speaking, I think Jace, the two of them should have yeah. the opportunity to sort of let it sink right. in and look at it a little bit more. I mean, we've had an opportunity to at least make right. our representation, mm -hmm. so it's not fair to put them on the spot mm -hmm. to say what sidewalks do you want. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, the, think about it in terms of, you know, th there has been discussion about um, a sidewalk along 117 that would go from the yeah. town line. Well, yeah, okay, fine. The problem we have yeah. there is that to um, to complete that and to um, come down South Greeley, you're yes. actually leaving town. Yeah, that's sure. right. That's Mount Pleasant, yeah. isn't it? Right. Yes. right. And yes. the only other one that would be great but feels completely uh, you know, nearly impossible to make happen would be going down Douglas. Right, right. and and right, that has that? been discussed as well. And maybe that's maybe that's something that we we that's go tough, and look at again. That's a tough road because not much. I know, it right? is a tough road, but you know it's, what? A tremendous number of people, people walk oh, along there. there. Yeah. It, is, yeah. it is incredibly walk dangerous there. for people to walk, walk down. Yes, I walked. I walked there, walked there <laughs> numerous <laughs> times now. Yeah, uh, yeah but you know. Think right, about so it. that would be the only other one, but I, I don't see how there's space for that. Right, right. it's not. It's hard it's rock. It's, in, it's, yeah. it's big incline and hard rock. Um, but from a and it's right, narrow. But there's so yeah. many uh, off of that road. There's a lot of off of Douglas, right? There's yeah, there's a, a ton of streets off of Douglas yes. that, mm -hmm. and people who live, especially if they live on Douglas, walk to downtown. Walk to the train station, and uh, right. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the tricky thing. I think the way that we got to this this list was by having a conversation, and that conversation included Douglas. Yeah. And at that time, when Sabrina was here presenting, um, you know, she gave us kind of a, a, a long list of reasons why Douglas would be a work. heavy lift, and we ended up going with this five. I don't think it's meant to suggest that this five are the only five places in town that would yep, make that sense to have point. sidewalks. Sure, but if you know, we now feel that Douglas ought to be included in that analysis. And, and I have to tell you, the, the thing that's, that is always attractive to me about Douglas is that it's all road. So although mm -hmm. it's problematic, mm -hmm. we, we don't need to take. Mm -hmm. We could ask for easements. We, you know, we it's have some flexibility yeah, right, in exactly. the construction of that. Regardless of how challenging it is, we actually have the ability right. to be creative and we don't have to worry that, well, no, New York State DOT is never going to yeah. allow that or, you know, we have to do a taking. We, we don't. And when we were allowed to do the sidewalk up Quaker, um, must be 15 years ago, yeah. the state allowed us easements only. That's the only reason why that sidewalk got built. We didn't have to take those properties. And it makes a huge difference, even to people's sure. mindset, the fact that they didn't have to give their property up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, that's been fabulously successful. Um, I, I don't 
think people you know can fathom what that looked like and again the genesis of it was so many people were walking to the train station at night along that road with no shoulders mm -hmm. and you know and we were able to meander it there, I mean yeah, just yeah. very things that the state would never allow us to do again and that's why we were so disappointed about 117 and their very hard line about the snow shelf and the sidewalks but you know maybe we could have a conversation with them again it certainly wouldn't hurt and well, I mean, it's an over prioritization, you know, a prioritization thing too, right? If I had uh, taking the, um, you know, the, the short limb or the, the, the easier, the easier pathway, not that 117 is going to be that much easier, not that going down 120 or, or, uh, or, any of the, or going up 100 is going mm -hmm. to be easy. Um, I'd rather start to make progress somewhere than spin our wheels trying to get Douglas working too. So right. it is a prioritization. Yeah. Kellen, in I, terms of next steps, what are what are your next steps to come to sort of working on the, sure. the plan that um, you've outlined? Absolutely. So finishing up the the template for Bedford Road. That way, we have that in our pocket for moving forward. It, it'll be a chapter within the comprehensive sidewalk plan. Mm -hmm. um, and then moving on to the other priorities uh, that were listed. And so, and because we're doing it in house, it is a little bit slower, but it's also a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. so, and from a workload perspective, or, you know, if you're able to speculate, I mean, would it be, do you have a sense of how, how much would it add to, you know, add Douglas into the, you know, I guess one of my thoughts is that if it's meant to be a comprehensive sidewalk plan, maybe we ought to include the, maybe we ought to be comprehensive, and even if we knowingly are including things that may be a bit of a reach and may not be a, a you know, low-hanging fruit or a quick win, but something that we're, you know, hoping that the town will continue to work towards in the coming years as this plan will kind of stand over the yeah, course of several and years. There's definite value to the fact that we're memorializing that conversation and the fact that we evaluated mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z so that the next town board doesn't come five years later and say, gee, it's so right. weird that they never looked at Douglas. Right. Mm -hmm. How come, you know, how come right. we never thought of this? Mm -hmm. That is a question that I get asked. Mm -hmm. On a regular basis. So it, it's sort of nice to have those you know, questions posed, and if there are no answers, then there are no answers as right. at this point. But at least people know that we've we've had the conversation, and that there was a reason that we just didn't plow straight ahead with it. And just to, just piggybacking on that, but with Bedford, I, I think with, like with I wish that we could get to Old Farm Lake as a mm -hmm. connection where Temple Bethel is, because mm -hmm. a lot of folks even cross. Yep. You know where Julio's Bikes is, and then there's that one way street. They cross that and when they're walking their dog to get to the neighborhood right over. I wish, can, is that a possibility? Or is that, we has that ever? That. Um, we We did as part of, that's yeah. where the original that's sidewalk was going to go. And yeah. the yeah. problem yeah. is, is again, it's a, a New York State road, so the state requires us to take 10, 10 feet. feet. I see. So, so those ho those houses have very shallow front yes, yards as it is. And so, so but I think to the point that we just made, I mean, if we're including Douglas and we're being comprehensive, we're going to have that same issue if we are looking at the template area and going up 117 yeah. the other no, direction. No, no, I, so I, I don't think see it's worth while looking at. Yeah, I think that's especially that's because you've got that um, the Greeley Woods path right through there. Yes. So it's sort of, you know, it's great. You can get from yeah. downtown all the way up to the synagogue, but then you're left. And, yeah. you know, I take the path all the time and I'm walking along right. that non existent shoulder. Right. Right. Yes. You know. <laughs> Nick, I'm sorry. I know you, you answered it or sort of did. There's definitely no hardship provision, and, and the state's position is they would rather know. I guess you can't state the state's position, but it seems as if the state's position would be we'd rather pedestrians and people just walk on the road as opposed to giving them a safe alternative. Yeah. They won't walk. Which is simply not the case. Right. I so think there's, no, there's nothing to petition, appeal. We'll go back and check. That's been my understanding. Um, but I'll go back and double check and make sure if there's any hardship petition. I think their concern is they either want to meet the standards or... or it's just not going to happen. Right. Yeah. But we'll, we'll go back and check. So Ivy, you mentioned you know a workload perspective, um, and a lot of this isn't just the planning side of it; it's the engineering side and mm -hmm. doing the CAD drawings and doing the measurements. And we had three interns out there doing this, and I think that's why Bedford Road is so far along, mm -hmm. because we had that extra person who had that skill set. Mm -hmm. Because I don't have the CAD skills; I have the GIS skills, and Terry already you know has a lot right. of workload. So right. it, it's really dependent on having that extra person or you know making this a priority mm -hmm. within Terry's workload. How much does it cost to hire an intern? Fifteen hundred dollars. Is that? No, no, it's for, it's for six the weeks. summer. Oh. 
but it's a matter of finding someone with those skills. So we, we get a different crop of interns each year. We they should, all have different add, skill sets. We should advertise. We should try to prioritize, but we've, that go again. we've looked for GIS as a skill set too, and we haven't always found that. So. Yeah. Um, it, it all depends from year to year, and when we when we get a great intern with fabulous skills, mm -hmm. we often lose them to bigger, better jobs. If we can keep them, we certainly do. <coughs> um, but let's, we, we will advertise for that early. Any other questions? Um, I'm also wondering, just along 120, you know, it, it, I, I love the idea of being able to connect it all the way to, to Billwood. But maybe interim steps are also realistic. So perhaps continuing the sidewalk to um, Roy and Brooks School, yeah. you know, just to be able mm -hmm. to have yeah. that connection. So at yeah. least you know, yeah. it's not five miles, but it's you know half a mile. From, a, from a financial mm -hmm. standpoint, I, I think it's that's much that's different. stuff that you're going to want to consider too. Because in, and I've had you know discussions with Ivy. There, there's a lot of stuff in you in the coming months. The newer board members will hear. It's a lot of stuff on the plate all, all around the town. So, you know, we're looking at this right here as the sidewalk plan, but that's not all we have. Um, and it's not all we need to fund. So being able to break that up into smaller pieces might make financial sense, too. So, yeah. It takes us five years at, to get at, there, then it takes at, us Right, time. absolutely. Yeah. You just think about that in terms of, you know, just... Uh, that's also why I asked where existing funding came for, mm -hmm. was from because I know there's you know, So just for you mentioned capital reserve, we we don't have any kind of res, a reserve. So projects that are when we borrow, we borrow exactly for an amount of a project. So there's not a, a spare amount floating there that we say, oh, well, that's unallocated. I have to when I borrow, name a specific project. I, I can't just borrow to have. Excess sure. charge. So um, we have fund balance in, in all of the funds, and that will be how some of the projects will be funded either directly from the fund balance or allocations of the fund balance to pay for the debt service. So that's happening now, and it, and it will probably continue in the future, I imagine. Makes sense. Right. So before we leave this discussion, um, I just want to ask. When do you think is a reasonable amount of time for us to come back to it? Because ideally, we'd like to be able to just give some direction as to whether or not the priorities that were set prior are the priorities we want to stick with. The, the fact that we've got in the five working on these two elements in Millwood is that sufficient right now? Just to want to shift back. When do we think is a reasonable time for us to just come back and revisit it so we can we can at least set the priorities for this portion? Mm -hmm. So. Um, I mean, I don't know how long it's going to take the two of you to sort of think and weigh in on this, but I, I think based on the conversation today, it sounds like we're, we're Not very much in agreement. Yeah. 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 Um, I think what we need to understand is from the town's perspective in terms of being able to create the comprehensive plan, mm -hmm. the finalized document that includes all of these priority areas and that then allows us to create capital projects and go out to look for grant funding and all of the things that we would then need to do in order to be able to implement the plan. If we continue down the path that we're on right now using town hall staff, what's the timeline and the trajectory for that versus are there other options that exist? Do we need to bring in additional resources to think about how to fast track this and what would be the sort of cost benefit of doing either of those two approaches. Well, and also to add on to that, if we're going to put our priorities in this comprehensive plan, I think, like Ivy said, and I agree, we're either going to do Bedford Road or the Chap Line. We're not right. going to do both. So I, I wouldn't want to put both in the plan because yeah. then you're setting expectations that are not just not going to happen. Right. So I'd like to kind of understand the difference between mm -hmm. the Bedford Road versus the Chap Line in terms of feasibility and kind of where we're leaning toward, you know, a, a goal. Yeah. And when is uh, the chap line study going to be completed? Um, I have to um, set up a couple of meetings. We've actually had some very encouraging meetings with the MTA, um, and uh, Bob Seely is going to start the permit process, which appears not to be too onerous, which was surprising. Um, and we were, yeah. Um, <laughs> Don't question it. <laughs> um, no, it just makes you a little like 
like, what's wrong with this picture sort of thing. So we'll, I'm sure I'm going to be able to shoot a drop. Um, we also were alerted to some very interesting funding um, possibilities, and I got a follow-up email on that today, um, where unlike the prior funding opportunities where we were, they were looking for a 50% share to the town from the town, it would be a 20% share from the mm. town, oh. and they would pick up 80%, which wow. sort of changes the... Don't tease. Oh, this is, this is I know. Yeah, this is right. This is right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, <laughs> so we're is that a state grant? Is that a yeah. state grant? Is that a state yeah. grant? Or a state grant or from, coming from somewhere else? I think it's a federal. Yeah. Right, federal? Yeah. I, Great. Need so, but so all of that would it will be included in the feasibility study, study, yes, study, which we think will study. be so coming in end of the month, end of next month. Um, I have to uh, take a meet with some property owners. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and then I will report back to the board. I just need to get some potential dates coming forward, and I can. And then I, I think like, our expectation is when that comes in that that's sort of the opportunity for the town board to, to review the feasibility yeah. study and do essentially make a go-no-go -no -go decision about whether we're continuing right. to pursue the chat line. Right. Um, and if if yes, then we drop the 117. If no, we have to really prioritize the one, 117 spur up to, because right. so, right. it's either one or the other, we're trying right. to solve that problem. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think we'll get Sabrina. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Tom. Cool. And that's for Sabrina. Perfect. So Sabrina's going to come in and just give us a, a little bit of a, a background uh, to the form base code. We have. Um, Representatives. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait, there's more. <laughs> we have um, next week so cool. a working group meeting from uh, 6 30 to 8 30. Mm -hmm. So at that point, um, Eric will be in here to take and discuss with the board, bringing up to date um, on, and discuss the second draft of the form based code. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that's going to be the more substantive discussion. This is more of just, you know, an overview and timeline as to where. Where we are right now, how we got here, and what what are the next steps? When is that meeting? Uh, next Tuesday. Oh, during what? Yes, yes. During got it. Yes. So um, that meeting will be from six thirty to eight thirty, and then we'll have our town board meeting. Hello. 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 Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Ready? We're ready. Mm -hmm. All right. Our form based code yeah. update. You are cheery today. Yes, you are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just ready to wake up. It's early. It's form um, codes. We don't like to talk exactly. about that. What's Jason? Jason has this effect on people. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Um, right. So I'm just going to give you a quick update. Next Tuesday, the town board is going to be meeting with members of the planning board in the downtown working group where the consultant Tortagalis will be coming in to present to you version two of the draft form based code, which was circulated to all of you. I have received comments from different members of the downtown working group. I presume that there will be a version three of the code, and much of that discussion next Tuesday will be about comments that other members of the downtown working group and town board members will be commenting on specifics that they're unhappy with mm -hmm. and changes that need to be made. And it is unclear at this point whether or not Tortagalis will be making the third changes to the third version of the code, or that will be done by myself. Um, their scope of work, I had, had identified two rounds of this, um, but we're at a point right now, and I'm going to go through this and, you know, I'll point out where we are and what we have left to do to get to the point where we have a completed uh, generic environmental impact statement and you folks are primed to consider adoption of the code. So just to kind of give a sense of of what this is for folks who don't who aren't as familiar. So right now we have a zoning code 
in for the, it, throughout town, which separates uses, um, which separates um, uses. So we have residential zoning districts, we have commercial zoning districts. We don't necessarily intermingle them unless the zoning allows. So that's really called Euclidean zoning. That is what most of Westchester has zoned since the 1950s, if you will. A form-based code is a little bit different. It really looks at the relationship between the buildings and the public realm, the streets, the form and mass of buildings in relation to each other, and it looks at the scale and type of streets and blocks. It doesn't necessarily look at uses. It says, let the free market dictate what use is going to be in the buildings. We care about what those buildings look like. So the new regulation that we're looking at, which will replace the section of the code for the Chappaqua Hamlet, the BR and the BRP zoning districts, and will replace some of the IP, the industrial plan industrial districts that the town hall and the park and the train station sits on, will consist of standards that are address the form-based code. So the relationship of the buildings in the Hamlet to the street, to the public realm and to each other. And in this form of legislation, it will be different in that it's not just words on the page. It will actually actually be a plan and a map. So for those of you that have looked at the draft code, you will see pictures. You will see diagrams. When they say a certain type of sign, there's a picture below it that shows what that sign resembles. So it's a little more user friendly and specific to what that building should look like out in the world. Project time frame, what we've done so far. So I'm going to harken back to July 2014. This is kind of what started it all. We had a public engagement report. Pace University Land Use Law Center came in and they did extensive outreach to our community and produced the public engagement report. And this gave us the foundation to undertake the 2017 comprehensive plan. In the 2017 comprehensive plan, we took what people told us in that public engagement process and we turned it into policies and actions which reflect what people wanted us to do. In December 2018, uh, the town board uh, issued a moratorium for the retail business zoning districts. We're still under that moratorium. It started in December of 2018 and that's the date that it was filed with New York State with the New York uh, Department of State so that that is the in December that's when it kicked off. In May 2019 that is when we signed the contracts and hired Kimley Horn, Torta Gallus, and Rest Group who is the consultant team that we tasked with helping us create this form-based code. We then um, extended the moratorium in June, and in July, we had a community meeting regarding the form-based code. And this was where we somewhat oriented our consultant team to what the community had wanted, what we were thinking of for the Chapqua Hamlet, and really helped solidify the foundation within which they were going to create the code. In November 2019, the town, the downtown working group, the town board, and the members of the planning board, as well as three other uh, citizen representatives, received the first draft of the form-based code. After the downtown working group discussed that first draft, we posted it online and put the public had an opportunity to go in and look at it if they wanted. This is not exciting stuff. This is legislation. <laughs> um, I haven't really, I've had several property owners in the downtown come and speak to me about this. They are very interested in this. They want to know more. They've asked for more, um, if you will, public marketing information so they can understand it in layman terms. Um, so we're working on that right now. I'm working with Lyle Anderson and Carrie Krams on trying to redefine a web page that is more user friendly and easy for folks to understand. In December of this year, we extended the moratorium again mm -hmm. so that we're still working under that uh, protection, if you will, where we don't have any projects coming in without understanding what our, legislation, what our regulations are going to change to. We also received at the end of December, just before the holidays, the second draft of the form-based code. And this was the draft that was circulated to everybody just before the Christmas holiday. I have received comments from... Um, 
from three people on this draft, um, which is why I can tell you that we do need a third version of this code. So but we're in good shape. This is what we have left to do. <coughs> so um, next week we'll be, we will be meeting to discuss the second draft of the form-based code, talk about changes to that code. We will also be reviewing um, the, we, we will be doing a lead agency designation. So this is a town board action. It is not a downtown working group action where you would declare yourselves lead agency and you will circulate an environmental assessment form with the draft code attached to it. So there will be a proposed action which describes what this is. Typically, when you change regulation, it does not require a, a, an EIS. We are doing a generic environmental impact statement because we, as part of this process, have are, are or will, through the, through the process, do what's called a full build-out analysis. What is the worst case development we can expect in the Chapel of Hamlet? <laughs> So we can understand really the worst case. The most development. I'm sorry, in environmental terms, it's the most impact. But the what what is the what is the what is the level of density that we are not going to impact the environment? That's probably the best way to say it. Um, and then that may dictate further changes to the draft legislation, depending what the outcome of that analysis is. So you will start that process by declaring lead agency status and circulating the notice of intent. Once that occurs, 15 day or 30 days after that, no, that um, designation is made, you will then begin addressing a scoping document. A scoping document is really the table of contents for the generic environmental impact statement. That will occur in February. You will have discussions in the downtown working group, discussions at the town board, to make sure that that table of contents is representative, representative of everything you want the generic environmental impact statement to study. We, according to the consultants time frames and the time frames we set for this project, that DGEIS, the Draft Generic Environmental Impact Statement, will be delivered in April of 2020. A month later, May 2020, um, the adoption of findings will be ready. So there will be a finding statement which will be primed for your consideration and adoption as the town board. In June 2020, provided everything goes smoothly, you will be able to consider adoption of the form-based code. So that's kind of... It's kind of exciting. It's very exciting. <laughs> I, I'm excited. Uh, good. Yeah, no, it, it is exciting. These are these are really important decisions that you have before you. It's mm -hmm. they're fun decisions, and we'll see where we end up when we everything comes out in the wash. So it, it, there's a the work that is being done. I'm going to go back a little bit. All started in July 2014. So here we are. We're in 2020. Six years later, we adopted the comp plan in 2017. <coughs> Three years later, we're actually working on policy that addresses everything that the community said they wanted for the Chapel Hamlet. I, I think all kidding aside, it is exciting. It's a, it's a potential, or not potential, it will be a game changer for, mm -hmm. for the Hamlet and for the greater community. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It's all good. So it's all good. So that's all I have for you tonight. I can answer any questions that you have um, next week. It'll be a, a long meeting. We've allocated a couple of hours to go through the code with the consultant. We've worked really hard to get to this point. It's really yeah. fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, know, I don't know if either of you were in the meeting that we had in November. Were you there? We had the, the meeting that we had in November of 2019, the video for that is available mm -hmm. on the All website. All the documents, the PowerPoints, the videos. When I was preparing for this conversation tonight, and I was reading, I, I reminded myself that I should go back and watch that video because Eric did a really good job of explaining each of the sections. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. I'd forgotten it. Um, so I, I feel like it would just be, if anybody is interested in yeah, doing any homework it, before next Tuesday, yeah. that, that, that video, Eric's presentation on the, in the November meeting was, was really helpful, I think. 
And what I said was exciting. It wasn't that exciting, too. Well, and I do <laughs> it was that exciting. Well, I do, do want to say I know that Ivy He sold that to you, let's face it. I know that yeah. Ivy started commenting on the second draft using Google Docs in the Dropbox. Everybody can see comments and replies. Yeah, I didn't realize until I saw your response that everybody was going to see all yeah. those comments. That's okay. Um, well, well it's, and listen, there's pro. It's all good. Okay. Um, I, the only difficulty is I cannot print the comments off of Google Docs. I can transpose them to a hard copy, which is fine. But if folks want to add to that and, and build that, please feel free to do so. It's a really user-friendly way for a group to share comments mm -hmm. on That's a project. And they don't print, huh? What? They don't you, print. No, and, and when I asked Google, how do I print this, they said, it's not yet available. Please let us know in your comments <laughs> what you'd like to see us change. <laughs> It's okay. I have a system to get them on paper so we can at least all have one hard copy of comments. Okay. That's great. Okay. Thank you. 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 On page 12, there you should have the great version. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, in color. So, I do want to Yeah, so each year, um, at the beginning of the year, is it each year or do you do it each Every time? Every two years. Every two oh, years. years. Yeah. Really? yeah. I think we check in on them at least mm -hmm. two times. Yeah. Um, so, I guess at the beginning of, of each new sort of supervisor's term, so every two years, uh, the town board has a conversation about the goals and objectives for that, those coming two years. Um, and the goal is not, and nor would it ever be possible, to list all of the things that town hall staff works on, because most of the things that get worked on are are things that you know come up as a part of the sort of routine um, activities of the town. Um, but what we're trying to do is to establish for town hall staff, for Jill and for all of her team, uh, to understand where our priorities lie. Um, so with that in mind, this is mine <laughs> to get us started in terms of our conversation. Um, but. The, what we're meant to do right now is to have a conversation about what is ours. So to add to this and to um, sort of make changes. And um, that doesn't mean that if something doesn't get listed here, we're not going to work on it necessarily. Um, but what this ultimately then becomes is sort of a tracking mechanism for us to be able to measure our progress, both as a town board and, and as, as a town, um, against those priorities that we have set for ourselves. And as I mentioned sort of at the top of this meeting, um, Rob has graciously offered to uh, serve as our... Uh, <laughs> our square keeper. Our I, I, I've been calling him our PMO director, which yeah. <laughs> Jill's like. <laughs> um, so <laughs> so um, just to put this into to very concrete terms, um, the CFA, which is the Consolidated Funding Applications, are due in July. Mm -hmm. um, and that is our annual opportunity to apply for grants. So one of the things, one of the critical functions that this actually serves is telling the staff what are the areas that are most important to the board so that we can then take and try to find viable funding opportunities for us to be able to move forward with these projects because we clearly don't have the operating budget to be able to do them or anything else. And it may not be the first time around, maybe the second we actually were able to um, do Sabrina's great uh, wordsmithing. Um, we ended up with $453,000 for our, $59,000 for our um, sewer project, which we finally have in our hot little hands. It's a really hot, heavy lift, but we got it. Um, just, you know, just applying for grants because we were in the midst of an infrastructure project and wouldn't it be great if we got something. Um, so that's also really helpful so that, that our staff knows exactly where your priorities are and where they should push to be able to accomplish it. So having said and, that. But that may also help prioritize <coughs> the capital projects because yes. projects that we can get funding for and we're not paying for ourselves might move up the ladder a little bit quicker. Absolutely. Other than the fact that some just need to be done. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Just, there, there's a combination of that. So there's how I always used to say like to have and need to have. It. Yeah. There's there's that aspect of it, but there's the aspect you know if you've had you have five like to have projects and one of them has funding that one might move to the front of the like to have. Was, would it be appropriate in this list, sort of the need to have, like for example, you know, the, since I think the first day I came here, not literally the first year, we talked about the water tower. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it seems to be that every year we can wait another year. We can wait another year. Eventually, we're going to stop saying we can wait another year. Well, Jerry updates that each, right. each budget process. I don't know. And I think it was time. well. I think it was last year that he they actually had a study. Done and How many years did we have left on it? Do you recall? We've got, I thought he said like eight, but we weren't going to go that, that far. It was quite I a few. It was well, well I, I think what, it what they said we might have, and when we believe that we're going to replace, we're not going to go up until the last day that we think it'll last. I, I think we're at like three years out, is really okay. what he was. Right. And then the bridge. Right, so just, just a couple things. So um, when it comes to that water tower, I do know that there is, is it Beacon? I think Beacon is in the midst of replacing their yeah. water tower, yes. and mm -hmm. so Bart has been going up to yeah. observe their. Well, interested. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bart has been going up to uh, observe the process and to figure out if this is the, in fact the new what we would yeah what we that's would right, like to recall, be doing. Recall. Yeah. So um so that's been really um that's been something that we that has been on the top of our list because if it turns out that that this process is what we want to take and undertake it would be great that we were able to observe Beacon and see what their missteps if any or you know we could do it a little bit better going forward but we have a plan in mind for it so. And, and Jeremy, under kind of goes along with that. Under, under the first box, under improved capital planning and and infrastructure and creating a capital plan. So yeah. we did start in the middle of this yeah. year. We are meeting more frequently with the the department heads and and my discussions with Ivy. And, and I think I've mentioned this before. Before the most important thing for me to. We have to oil it. Get oil, get WD-40 for the three hours. Bring it in tomorrow. But to have an accurate forecast for a capital plan, I've got to have accurate numbers for these projects. So, and I, I gave Ivy a couple examples of, of numbers that we had worked with many years ago uh, in the budget book that we said that downtown project was going to cost or the basketball court and playground, these things their back of the envelope and that's not great for planning right. so we really um, we're meeting more frequently with the department heads to kind of fine-tune their projects to uh, to confirm the priority uh, the urgency of them and as they're becoming urgent what steps are we taking for example the community center mm -hmm. the, the yes. roof study because yes. that's urgent so, um, and the, well, and, was, and, was, and the bridge, the, the bridge, not the bridge, but the, the park, the yeah. culvert, yep. culvert, yep. We're yep. waiting on Con Ed on that. We're oh, in the parking lot, or are you talking to the water main going over the bridge? No, I was talking about the, right. that's, okay. that's, that's, well, that's another one, one too. Another one. Right. That's another one, yeah. yeah. right, right. Yeah, so, so those, are, those are on the radar, and, and <coughs> like I say, as we, we meet more frequently, um, you know, we're keeping a better handle on these projects. But going back to two things that I, I'm not super aware, well aware of, like I, I know the community center because mm -hmm. that has been surfaced last year, last term. But mm -hmm. like, is there a master list of what Jared? Like, I don't even know. Yeah, just think there is right now. The back to the budget yeah. book, there is. Okay. Yeah. And okay. I, I'll have the adopted, which hasn't changed from the preliminary, but I okay. changed the title and update some of the current year numbers. But that'll be out this week. Oh, cool. uh, will be published uh, to the website this week. Um, and you'll see it's, it's the same, it hasn't changed from the preliminary that is posted as well. Um, but there is a, a priority list. I think I have two pages, one that are projects that are active and current, and another uh, page that are projects that are being considered for the future. What will also help you with that is 2A, right, the creation of a capital plan for the right. 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 castle. That's when you right. see the asset, uh, the list of assets and buildings and so forth mm -hmm. and maintenance plans. Yeah. Help. And, and I think that that's something that we have not circulated <clears throat> to the board in prior years, and I think yeah. that that's yeah. actually tremendously helpful. So, so the, the maintenance plans, when when you see yeah. what I mean, we know what they are, but it's just something that 
that we mm -hmm. tend not to share, and we need to do that. Mm -hmm. What do you envision with this in terms of us sort of building off of it? Yeah, okay, like, good what, question. Like, um, I could, we could all throw <laughs> things that we think, but what if it's... Yeah, what's so, so what I, what I, the way in which I envision mm -hmm. us using this um, is that this then becomes the spreadsheet that Rob is updating and using on a quarterly basis to come in and to update us as to what's happening against these projects that we've identified as being a priority. And so the first, hold on, uh, 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 the first column here where everything's green today, this would be sort of like a red, yellow, green tracker to see, you know, what's behind schedule or, or needs our attention. Yellow is something that, you know, perhaps worthy of a discussion. There may be an issue which we need to resolve. And green is something that's, that's on track. It's going, it's going as we intended it to, and then we can focus our attention in these quarterly meetings on the areas that require our most attention. Um, and then he would use this, I kind of put columns in here for each of the each of the quarters to be able to present to us and, and uh, as to what's happened in the last quarter. So I want to make sure we have the right list of things for him to be and uh, tracking, and then, you know, for Jill to then be taking and figuring out you know, how to allocate time among the town house staff to get this forward. Right. So you answer the question I asked, so I asked the wrong question. <laughs> um, the question I meant to ask is how do you envision the four of us and the <laughs> adding to this to make additional um, like if we have comments on ideas side. or the things we think that should be addressed. Is this a working document? This is absolutely a working document. Yes. So um, should we maybe Set a time where we can get back together and yeah, and absolutely, yeah. And, and whatever and feedback also, we have. Right, if there are things that aren't on this, they no, should be. No, not added. a month. Like, yeah, like, like next, you know. next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I had mentioned to Ivy, like the the current Millwood sidewalk is not on here. The one that we are at ninety percent. It is. Well, it's 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 on it's on it is. Thank you. What's the creation yes. of that? Sidewalk master comprehensive plan. Right, that's the comprehensive sidewalk plan. But no, the top um, of the second page. Two one day. Finish the middle sidewalk. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yes, so that yeah. Sorry. Did I, I just formatted it because yes, I'm a total blind person. No, I, I actually changed the font to twelve. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, yeah, my we'll, we'll my comments on this are, are, are small. Okay. Yeah, and if there are other things, then, then yeah. And it, yeah. Yeah. so would it be helpful for us to all circulate amongst each other, kind of things we think should be added? Yeah, I think that's And then we talk about yeah. that all next week. Yeah. I think that's Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, I think I don't know how this was done in the past. When I joined, I got a list like this, and people said, "What do you think about this? Do you want to add anything to it?" Right. So these so. so so whatever. what had happened initially was is that the board took and brainstormed and, and made a determination. You know, we wanted to do the comp plan. We wanted to do um, the downtown infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So there were there were major projects that were multi-year projects, yeah, 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 which yeah. is mm -hmm. why yeah. and it was a continuation yeah. of what it was yeah. Yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. Right. that's yeah. the best way to put it. And there are things that you know we added along the way, or things that finally came to fruition, and we were finally able to get off going you know, move ahead with, but there were projects that we moved off, we basically closed the book on whether we decided not to do them because they were too long term. So, mm -hmm. you know, the chap line we had sort of started out getting busted and then when we got mm -hmm. that preliminary mm -hmm. estimate of 10 million, we sort of said, okay, maybe we'll wait on that one for another day, put mm -hmm. it to the back burner and turned our attention to other things. Yeah. So, you know, you still have items on here that obviously that we're finished, you know, that we're finishing. But, still have been carried. The Minkle Dam, that needs to be resolved. Yes. Um, that's going to be front and center for the right. board. But that's a this year um, job, right? Hmm? That's, that's a this year job, is it? Not? That's a this year job, yeah. again. So there's going to be things that are, you know, that we've been carrying forever yeah. that mm -hmm. we're finally in a position yeah. to be able to do that. Um, and, you know, and brand new things. Well, so right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Great. So what would make sense? Should we ask everybody to get back to us within sort of a week, which would be able to, you'd then be able to compile right. that so, information so the for the next, next meeting session? on the 14th, we've got the, the uh -huh. we have that and then a town board meeting right afterwards. Yeah, yeah, um, I'm thinking for the 21st. Yeah, I'm thinking for the 21st. Like, so. get it all yeah. done by the 14th. Yes, right. so that, that, that would be perfect. It can be compiled and then, yes. Okay. Yes. Does that work? Yes. 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 That makes sense. Yes. 
All right, and then we'll, we'll put it together. And again, you know, it can just be in draft form, each individual just mm -hmm. giving priorities, and we'll just figure out where right. they get folded in. I am not making mine into a pretty chart, I will tell you. No. It's going to be written. Yes. And, 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 and email is sufficient. Maybe a bullet. Okay, all of you lawyers, I know that you're not able to think um, in terms of spreadsheets. I mean, Jason will send his in a spreadsheet, I can I tell you that. Too, Thank you. And actually, we're talking about some markups and arrows. Another thing, too, we were talking about this yesterday. I was like, is there a Dropbox folder or a share folder that we can all use so that there's one breathing document? that we all use so that there's not like a hundred versions of something that we're working off of. And I, I'm happy to, I don't know if that's okay to do, like can we do it that way? Like what's you protocol? Just create a new... You can if, if the board's comfortable using that, everyone's comfortable having one master document that you sure. all put your edits into. Because I can yes. create a Although I think this well, is a little bit more of a discussion than an yeah. edit. I think, yep. right, I think Look we like should start comments. that way. Well, I think we should I, start I th just sending our... What, once this has been completed, yeah. And again, it's, yes, it's then discussions. It a, yeah. right, right. Then it becomes yeah. a, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like that works great with legislation, things like that, but this, I feel like, is more just a global discussion okay. type of document, yeah. but yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Um, so the, the next um, items are administrative items. So these are items that are... Um, generally just minimal, minimal discussion points. So uh, payment of claims. So the way our payment of claims is, uh, Diana Caffarelli takes in, uh, circulates to the board um, a uh, summary of the payment of claims that the board approves, and then we take in, we have a resolution that then takes and approves it for issuance the next day. Um, so that's our payment of claims. Northeast Recreation is an annual renewal. Northeast Recreation is, um, is uh, services for uh, developmentally disabled adults. Mm -hmm. um, our recreation program uh, to help sponsor it, so this is our payment to them annually. The next is the uh, approval of the conference attendance for Lauren to attend the um, Association of Towns that uh, Jason and Ivy will be attending as well. Uh, the approval of car usage, town car usage. So we sort of have a stringent policy when it comes to the uses of our town cars. And so if someone's going to be going out of town and they know that they're going to be going out of town, as opposed to you know just going from one side of town to another and passing through Mount Pleasant, um, we require town board approval. So in this instance, uh, Christine Gray is going to be taking a car out of town to uh, accompany the, um, the ski trips. Yeah. So in that instance, you know, if heaven forbid sure. somebody gets sick or something like that, the entire group doesn't have to go, so she's got to go yeah. over there. Um, so uh, we make sure that she's got approval, and that way we know where all our cars are, and nobody's surprised along the way. So. Um, and the last thing is a police radio service agreement. This will be actually for approval next week, but uh, the police got new radios. We have an annual service agreement with the company that takes and maintains them, so this is just what that is. So okay. one, one quick thing about the sure. payment of claims. So uh, obviously not insurance claims. These are just payments that are basically checks. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, these right. are checks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that, I, that I got. So we don't wind up getting that until basically day of. Right. Correct? Right. And so um, it's tough to, right? we're mostly going based upon, you know. You, the, staff uh, review. Yeah, staff review, right? Right. Because it's, it's going to be impossible to so, really review and, that. And kind this, of this can change. Um, this has been based on kind of how this has happened over the last several years. Um, we have a very, very thorough staff review on uh, accounts payable. Our, our auditors will attest to that. But um, we can back that up. My accounts payable person was here until about 5 o'clock tonight or whatever time she yeah. sent that email. Mm -hmm. So she's literally entering up to the last minute. So mm -hmm. if you ever have an issue or if you want to back that up or have more time to review it, um, we can we can so, change that procedure. No um, I just wanted to make no, sure I Absolutely. Had. No, it, it, it can be, I mean, that's the intention is that, yeah. that you guys see it. Yeah, so. it's just very different um, from the fire commissioner where I, yeah. I review every check that comes in and yeah. balance it. So, so, it's a whole different story. So yeah. just if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'll introduce you to Diana. Yeah. Yeah. She literally. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Yeah, yeah. No. I'm just going to call the mill with the yeah, yeah. and have him look it over. <laughs> not, not anything. No problem. No, Gets through literally it. nothing. Yes. We, we have a, a pretty good procurement policy and, and 
and make sure that's yep. followed to the T. Great. So, right, Nick? Absolutely. She calls <laughs> us with questions, documentation is missing, make sure the resolutions are there, yeah. all the appropriate signatures are there, the dollar mm -hmm. amount authorized matches the dollar amount on the invoice. Which, which, yes. That's yeah. all the job of your staff to make sure that's being done. So it's all approved by the department head first. They sign the voucher, purchase order, or what yeah. have you, and then it comes up to accounts payable where she reviews all the documentation. If it's not perfect, it goes back. Um, so. And it goes back on a regular basis. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and some heated discussions. Much to the yes. chagrin of, of the rest of the staff. Certain, yeah. certain, certain departments just <laughs> do as good a job as others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but let me know if you, if you yeah. have a comfort yeah. level. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, resolutions? Warren, you're, you're up. Warren, you're up. All right. Here. <laughs> you got it. It's right in front of you. Yes, right I have here. it right here. Yeah. So, um, I move to approve payment of claims in the amount of $194,408.11, 2019 expenditures totaling $186,365.14, and 2020 expenditures totaling $8,042.97, Listed on the summary pre-check writing report and detail voucher detail reports, all dated January 7, 2020. Checks will be issued and mailed to each claimant listed on Wednesday, January 8, 2020. Second. Okay. It's her. It's her? Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> we usually do them in order, yeah. so whoever knows <laughs> that. Yeah. That's why we were all messed up last time around. Yeah. All in favor. Uh, all right. Is this five Generally days or three messed days? messed it up last time. <laughs> we're going to change it to five, five days. Five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So on the next one, Lauren, we're just so changing five, number three to five. Yeah, five days. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, I move um, to grant Christine Gray, Assistant Superintendent of Recreation, five additional vacation days in addition to the ten days as per this CSEA yeah, exactly. contract for. That the doesn't apply. Yeah, right? it doesn't apply. Right. Yeah, just for twenty twenty period. Just for for twenty for the year twenty twenty for the year twenty twenty. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor. Aye. Should it be for twenty twenty? We should just leave that. Does that forward. mean that 2020? Yeah, you would have to, you you would have to re approve that every, every year. year. So, so um, just maybe we can just amend that to. Uh, annually. Annually. Yeah, just annually. Her terms annually. of employment annually. be modified annually. to reflect. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Right, that her terms of employment be modified to reflect yeah, that's the um, total increase. of 15. Uh, right, the increase of five additional vacation days in addition to the 10. Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Can you do the modified language? Okay, thank you. So should Lauren skip this one? Since yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. Do it. I move to authorize Lauren Levin to attend the newly elected officials 2020 training school held by the Association of Towns on January 15th to 17, 2020 in Albany, New York for a total estimated cost of $248 for room and board plus travel expenses. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I move to authorize Christine Gray to utilize a town vehicle during the scheduled ski trips to Catamount Ski Mountain on the following dates, January 10th, 17th, 24th, 31st, and February 7th, with a makeup date of February 28th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You want to go, Jeremy? I'll just finish. Okay, I move to authorize the hiring of Matthew Burak to the position of recreation attendant within the Rec and Parks Department, an hourly rate of $13 per hour for basketball, flag football, teen scene, and special events, effective January 13, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I move to authorize the hiring of Benjamin Beresford to the position of Recreation Attendant within the Recreation and Parks Department at an hourly rate of $14 to serve as the chaperone for ski trips, effective January 10, 2020. S subject to background check? Yes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I'm sorry, so it's about a successful background check. Was, was, was it well, training? Yeah. Was it training? Training. 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 training? Yes. yes. So second. No, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.